In this demonstration, we will illustrate how to work with interfaces in Java. Remember, an interface defines a protocol or contract of behavior. It's a template for a class as it specifies what a class must do, but not how to do it. Interfaces either have no or a public access modifier. Here, we define an interface accountable with a public access modifier. Interfaces contain headings for methods without implementations. We defined a method isValidDeposit, which returns true if a specified string is a valid amount to deposit. We also have a method deposit, which does not return anything or void, but adds the specified amount to the balance. We have a method isValidWithdrawal, which returns true if a specified string is a valid amount to withdraw. And finally, we have a method withdraw, which doesn't return anything or void, but subtracts the specified amount from the balance. Next, we define a class savings account. This class savings account implements the accountable interface. We import the package big decimal because we will use this to represent numbers or amounts. The class savings account has two private variables, name and amount. We make both variables private because we will be using the ideas of encapsulation or information hiding and approach both variables using getter and setter methods. Here, we define a constructor. Remember, the constructor has the same name as the class. Our constructor can throw an exception. It has two input variables, name and amount. First, we check whether amount is a valid number to deposit. We do that using the method isValidDeposit, which we will clarify in a moment. If amount is valid, then we set the name and we set the amount of the savings account object which we created. Our next method is the method isValidDeposit. It takes one input parameter deposit, which is of type string. This method is a method that was defined earlier in our accountable interface here. So basically what we do here in our savings account class is we overwrite it, as you can see indicated with this annotation right here. First thing we do is we take our string deposit and turn it into a big decimal variable temp. In case problems occur, an exception can be thrown. We then check whether our temp variable is bigger than zero, yes or no, and return the result back to the caller. The method deposit has also been defined in our interface, hence the annotation overwrite. Basically, we first check whether the input variable deposit is valid, yes or no, using the method isValidDeposit. In case the method isValidDeposit returns true, we add the amount to the current balance. Next, we have a method isValidWithdrawal, which also takes one input variable, withdrawal, again represented as a string. We convert the string withdrawal back into a big decimal and store it into a temporary variable temp. In case problems occur, an exception can be thrown. We also check whether the amount that we wish to withdraw is less than the current balance of the account. We can do this using this statement right here. The result of this can then be returned to the caller. We then have the method withdraw, which takes an input variable withdrawal, which is the amount that we wish to withdraw. First, we check whether the amount is okay. And if the amount is okay, in other words, if this statement evaluates to true, then the amount will be withdrawn from the current balance using subtract, as you can see right here. Finally, we have our getter and setter methods for the name and amount variables. Final method is the method toString, 
which was inherited from the object superclass, remember. Object is the superclass of all classes in Java and has a method to string. Hence, we overwrite it here, as you can see with the annotation. And we basically give a string-based representation of our savings account object, representing both the name and the amount. We also define a check-in account class. This check-in account class also implements our accountable interface. It has also two private variables, encapsulation, remember, name and amount. But for the check-in account class, we require the minimum balance to be 100. So we introduce a variable minimum balance, which we set to 100 represented as a big decimal. Just as with the savings account class, we have a check-in account constructor method here, which takes name and amount as the input variables. We again check whether amount is valid to be deposited. And if this evaluates to true, then we set the name and we set the amount of our check-in account object. An exception can be thrown if something goes wrong. Next, we provide implementations for the various methods of the interface. So first we have is valid deposit. It takes one input parameter deposit, which is again represented as a string. We convert it back into a big decimal, which we store as temp. Next, we check whether our temp big decimal is bigger than zero, yes or no. We also check whether after adding the amount to the balance, whether the amount of the new balance is bigger than the minimum required balance as represented by our min balance variable. This you can see right here. Here we have our deposit method, which is quite similar to the previous one. So we first check whether the input variable deposit, whether this is okay to be deposited. If the is valid deposit call returns true, then we add the deposit amount to the current balance. An exception can be thrown in case something goes wrong. Now we have similar methods for withdrawal. So we have the method is valid withdrawal, which was also defined in the interface, hence the annotation override. Again, we have an input variable, which is string. We convert it into a big decimal, which is being stored as temp. An exception can be thrown if something goes wrong. Again, we check whether after, so after withdrawal of the amount, whether the balance is still bigger than min balance, yes or no. So this basically checks whether after we have withdrawn the amount specified by withdrawal, whether the amount remaining on the balance is still bigger than min balance or 100 in our case. Then we have the method withdraw, which was also defined in our interface, hence the override, which basically uses the method subtract to subtract the withdrawal represented as a big decimal from the current balance. As with the savings account class, we have getter, setter methods for the amount and name variables. We finish the class definition by again providing an implementation for the method toString, which was again inherited by the object superclass, providing us with a string representation of our check-in account object. Now we can play a bit with these classes in our account manager class. So here you can see that I've defined an account manager class with a main method. Remember, the main method is always an executable method. It's the entry point of program execution. So here you can see that I have two objects which are of type accountable. So my savings is a savings account object. So I create an object, my savings, as new savings account. The name is save. 001 and the balance is set to 10. I can then print it. I can then call the method withdraw to withdraw five uh, units from the account and I can again print it. Here I create a check-in account object by checking which I initialize, initialize to, to the name check 001 and the balance to 110. I print it and then I try to withdraw 15 from my check-in account. What do you think will happen? Well, remember, we required the minimum balance for, ch for the check-in account to be 100. So most likely, at least hopefully, an exception will be thrown and this exception message will be printed. 
Let's verify this by running our account manager class. Here you can see our account manager class. You can see that first the information for the savings account object is printed. So we started from a balance of 10. Then we withdrew 5, so that gives us 5. But for the check-in account, we started from a balance of 110. Then we tried to withdraw 15, but this goes below our minimum required balance, which was 100, remember. So that's why the exception is thrown. If we would change this to 5, then we would have 110 minus 5, which is 105. 105 is bigger than the minimum required balance, so this is definitely okay, and nothing will go wrong. Now you can see that the balance has successfully decreased from 110 to 105. So this illustrates how you can work with interfaces in Java, and we hereby conclude this demonstration.